Yeah, no, no, it's a very thriller story and how a lot of these things happen. I mean, independent filmmaking is pretty damn tough, but at the early stages when enthusiasm and euphoria are all there, everyone kind of pulls together to try and, you know, whatever contacts they have, they try and pull them together and uh, get two actors. And, you know, I always had an idea that Mr. Rheingold, you know, he needed to be an iconic figure, really, and Christopher Lee was the perfect choice for that. And, you know, also very open-minded, and I was very proud about the whole thing. But, yeah, casting quite a wide variety of people. You know, someone like Heather Graham, of course, there was an issue there because she had done Boogie Nights that uh, actually worked out rather well. Jamie Winston was a real fine for us. She had just come off the film and uh, got into the role very quickly. Gillian Anderson wanted to do it. She had just come off the back of How to Lose Friends, and so she wanted to shake that off. <laughs> It did quite an interest. I mean, if you see those two films back to back, it's actually a boogie. And from her point of view, looking at actors, it's really fascinating the trajectory she takes as a character. You know, Danny Houston and Stellan Skarsgård, and you know Amanda Siegfried, who had just come off doing Mamma Mia, still sort of in the shadows, and we were very lucky to get her. So yeah, the casting was. It's it's it always comes down to when you meet them and whether they want to do it with you or not. No amount of persuasion by outside forces will, will get them there unless they want to work with you. Was there ever any concern from from their point of view, you know, with you being a, a first time feature director? You know, obviously, you've got a solid career behind you, but being unproven in that ground was that ever an issue at all? A solid, I'd say, a career at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, it's a question of your confidence, and I've been in the art world for a long time, so it's not an area I'm, I'm used to. The conversation around it is reassuring, if you like. Actors like to play characters that aren't all, you know, going to end up being cute and cuddly at the end of the show. Uh, you know, that, you know, Boogie Woogie is certainly not a conventional film in the sense that everybody is flawed, and the resolution end is actually a mental end, and it's to do with the audience reflection, uh, not so much, you know, the character's uh, resolution. And in that, it's uh, it's contemplated, but it's also a satire so there's an element of you know it's quite um, bleakly funny you've been working in, in in film for quite some time but was there anything that was just completely kind of not two for six coming from a documentary background and then moving into fiction well the the actual mechanics and enterprise of feature filmmaking involves a great many people so you have to develop an instinct for collaboration and you know there's a great deal of trust needs to go on in all the various departments which when you make documentaries, you're pretty much single-handedly managing everything. With features, you know, you have several departments that you are hoping are all performing to the best of their ability. And often, if only when you're in the edit suite, that you realize that there are flaws or that you uh, haven't celebrated someone sufficiently because the work that they were putting in, you know, for instance, we had an art director on the film who was just really brilliant, but working underneath someone else and actually... Had I had the experience, I probably would have managed that role very differently and maybe got more of a result out of it in terms of the design of the film. But it's very realistic looking, the movie. It's not at all hyped up or over-colorized, if you like, in terms of making things overt. But yeah, no, there, are, there are areas, especially with personnel, there's a learning curve for anyone who hasn't worked in features to actually just sort of work on your ability to collaborate. The film um, had its premiere at um, Edinburgh earlier this year. Um, have mm-hmm. you had any reaction back from the art world? Because I, you know, I know Damien Hurst um, lent you pieces of art for for the project. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, given that it's not a fluffy look at these characters within the art world, has has anything come back from the art world as to you know, either agreeing or, or you know strongly disagreeing with their portrayal? Weirdly, all the various screenings we've done, in which I've, you know, invited, and, you know, the other members of the producing team have also invited people to, and any of those people who are from the art world, well, they all actually rather enjoy it because it's kind of quite real life-like for them, and so they know a lot of the characters or the impression of the characters, and so a lot of insider information doesn't distract away from the first-time experience of the film to anyone who's not in the business, but, no, it's been pretty positive from them. The criticism we have received is actually from the conventional press because they misread it, expect the film to resolve the moral dilemma rather than themselves consider it. And that's what art tends to do. It tends to provide you with a thought that you need to contain and manage, not necessarily the work itself, and that's in a contemporary setting. 
And so the film mirrors a lot of the language of art, but not in an overt, heavy-handed way, except that built into the movie is an entire construct of a work of art being made, and how uh, it, it, it develops through the course of the movie. So it, it's multi-layered on that sense. But yeah, no, the art world has been pretty appreciative to date. And those who haven't liked it, uh, you know, we've had a few hostile press, but that's not a bad thing in the modern era. Now that you've got, you know, Boogie Woogie on your belt and out there, are there any plans to continue down this fiction route? Are, you know, are there any other... Yeah, projects? absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, no, I mean, the interesting thing about it, I mean, the one major salient uh, experience that I come away with, apart from the absolute pleasure of making the film, it was a real joy, it was a funny... 28 days of extreme filmmaking, but everyone was really fascinating. The element of independent film producing is a really, um, you know, I've seen so many people around me scrambling for money and so forth that uh, one has to tackle it a little differently. So, yeah, I've got two other projects I'm right in the middle of developing as we speak and hope to shoot one next year, followed up by the second. Brilliant. Is there anywhere online at all that people can head to find out either more about Boogie Woogie or about, you know, your, your future work? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my website, www.iplugin.com, which is U-I-E-P-L-U-G-I-N, pretty much declares where I've been. And quite shortly, all the development stuff is going to be out there because we're obviously developing a brand that goes toward online distribution. I think, you know, this is where independent filmmakers will be able to control their work and also involve the investor group in potential greater rewards by the online world. I mean, the uh, the conventional distribution sort of snaps up all rights, but actually none of them are showing any great models for online distribution and sort of an area that, I feel independent should uh, seize the day, much like the music world. It's an open business model. It's worth taking on. Well, as I said earlier, Boogie Woogie plays at the Duke of York's on Thursday, the 3rd of December at half past six. And um, we definitely recommend that people head down there to get to see the film before it's um, you know, official release. And it's our pleasure to have the film at Cine City this year. And thank you so much, Duncan, for um, spending some time with us today to talk about the film. Great. That's very kind of you. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it and um, speak to you soon. Thanks for joining us here on the Cine City podcast. Visit www.cine-city.co.uk to view or download this year's full programme, book tickets and receive up-to-the-minute festival news. You can also subscribe to the podcast while you're there to make sure you never miss an episode. The Cine City podcast is created in association with Director's Notes, the weekly film podcast dedicated to the what, how and why of independent filmmaking. Find it at directorsnotes.com.